the the NBA, the NBA All Star Game, they had a, a total of something like three hundred and almost close to four hundred points scored in Sunday's All Star Game. If for those of you who don't watch basketball, you don't score that many points in an All Star Game, and it's a good game. Yeah, it sounds more like a home run derby. The a home run derby. It's, I don't even know. It's bad. This is what it is. And it's got people from Stephen A. Smith to players to a bunch of people in the last few days saying, fix this. This is terrible. And so we kicked this off in an article uh, just to give a little context uh, from Fox Sports. It says, over the past few days here, NBA VIPs implored the All-Stars to up their effort. This was before the game. Um, and, but people were saying, you know, we're not necessarily looking for players to go out there as if the finals as if it's the finals, but we need players to play defense. We need them to care about the game. Uh, the NBA made several changes in the format and the preparation, all in the hope to, uh, with the thinking that this was going to improve the game. Well, the commissioner and everyone else involved were wrong because it turns out the players had no interest in putting on a more respectable performance. Uh, Fox Sports writes, the game was as ridiculous as any in recent memory. Defense and any semblance of it was non-existent. It seemed like every shot was an open three or an easy dunk. And I can tell you because I chose to watch a few minutes of it. Yeah, that was the case. It was bad enough that I turned it off within six minutes because I was like, this is, this is insane. So Damian Litter, who won the MVP, says 200 points. Yeah, it's a lot. It just shows we didn't go out there and compete like I guess you'd want us to or whoever would want us to. That's just what it is. Okay, so not a whole lot there, but this is where we're going with this today. I think the NBA as a brand is in trouble, and here's why I say that. So we have some stats here on the list. If you look at, this is a all-star ratings history going back 30 years, and if you look at 1993 is the peak year for all-star watching. At 29 million, 22 million, almost 23 million people tuned into that game on a Sunday. And if you scroll back up throughout the whole entire history, we see a, just a constant descending count with last year being at 4.59 million. This year is right around 5 million itself. And so you can say, oh, well, that's just the all-star game. People are busy on Sundays, yada, yada. But if you look at this next clip, the next picture um, with the primetime viewership, uh, we can see that uh, it's the same trend. It's a trend <clears throat> from primetime viewership versus regular season viewership where we we're literally descending. But at the same time, here's the kicker. Revenue's never been higher. So what we're seeing is revenue's growing, but c customer interest is dwindling. And so in my, in my eyes, that puts them on a crash course for some things that they're going to have to deal with. <laughs> I think it's interesting that from, we'll call it like 2008 through 2012, you reached like pinnacle yeah. viewership, yeah. which was also the largest recession that we've had in the United States. Escapism. Yeah, hundred percent. So maybe this decline is uh, predictive of the 2025 debt wall that's looming out there in commercial real estate. Yeah. And maybe their viewership will go back up when people... I'm feeling broke. Well, to your credit, I've actually thought about this. And I think what's also happening is I think we've reached a space though, where the world was different in 2012 than it is now. And so I think that escapism, it won't be found in sports because yeah. it, that, cause now they're even broadcasting this stuff on cable television. Right. Yeah. And so I think it's going to be different. And I think the it, reality of it might also just be a testament to the political climate that has infiltrated sports as well. Well, that's, that's where we're going to go is like, what's eating at their brand. So here's, for those of you who don't watch basketball, well, here's what the brand has done from a <clears throat> nutshell of someone who doesn't work for the organization, but just can watch. They've eradicated competition. 82% um, of their viewing audience is between the ages of 18 and 40 and it's male. So 82% of their audience is men between 18 and 40 able bodied men who are fans of competition, dream vicariously through players, want to connect. They, Kobe, LeBron, like there's a certain degree of like, we connect with these stellar athletes and them achieving great things that we would like to achieve in our own respective arenas. They've gone away from that type of marketing. They've changed rules. Now everyone's shooting threes and doing a bunch of stuff. And so overall, the brand is in trouble. And why we bring it to you guys this morning is because I think the lesson here is like, 
you cannot ignore your consumer base. Right. I don't care what level of success you have. And um, that seems to happen in every large and mature organization yeah. where they, for, they start to manage to the balance sheet and they forget the customer or they forget the employee. And um, people don't think about the NBA like a business, but that's what's happening. Here. That's exactly what's happening. I mean, how long has the NBA been around? Uh, I'm guessing the 1940s, I believe. We got here, yeah. Forty six, eighteen forty six, yeah. That's a long run. Yeah, it's a long run, and now they're at you know ten that's, billion dollars. Yeah, that's circa end of World War Two. Yeah, so they're and they've reached ten billion dollars in revenue, ten point five billion in revenue, and um, but we have a dwindling viewership, and the game is also reaching global heights like never before. But people still aren't watching here in their home base. They're starting to watch less here in the home base, and so. You just, you think about it from a, a business standpoint. It's like, I'm reaching all these other markets, but the foundational market that keeps my business thriving and true to the brand is dwindling, but I'm going to continue to nurture these other audiences. Uh, it's just a big, big mistake in my opinion. You, you don't even watch the NBA. Yeah. It, which is when you're doing what we're doing, you don't really have time to do that. But I was like, I'm going to sneak a peek. I've done it for years. Yes, it's, it's going away. So the point is the brand is in trouble and your brand will be in trouble if you, if you, Ignore the people who brought you the success you have. You're automatically on a crash course for trouble. And you, whether you're the NBA or NBC or, I don't know, another NB combination, small ABC, or large, ABC whoever you are, no, it, you're not immune to the market. And the fact is, in a capitalistic system, there will be a competitor that comes. Just give it a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Just, there will be a competitor that comes along. Right now, it's creators like us. Exactly. Well, exactly. You look at the social performance on these accounts, the NFL, NBA, NHL, it's the, it's, the inf it's the creators who drive more views of the actual content than the actual broadcast themselves. Yep. So, so the wave is turning. And if I'm an NBA, Adam Silver, you can do it, my man. You can get back to, to 1990s through 2010, 2012 era type of uh, presentation of the brand and strategy and product. You can do it. And if you're going to take a note from the NBA, start there. Don't start here today where they are.